Hey Reiki Cafe, this is Christine Renee, and I recently had someone ask me, why do I do what I do? And I thought this was a really good time. We've had a lot of new people join the Reiki Cafe, and some of you guys don't know my story. And so I wanted to jump on and tell you a little bit about me and why I do what I do. So it kind of goes back many years when um, I got my Reiki Masters and I was in a pretty bad relationship. Hey, Melissa, thanks for watching. So I was with my first husband before we got married. Um, it, I was, it was still not a healthy relationship and I got my Reiki Masters under not the right scenario. Looking back, I needed a Reiki session. I didn't need my Reiki Masters attunement. And um, she left um, my Reiki master after the attunement class, which was only about three, maybe a total of four hours, um, left town and didn't give me any way to contact her. And I lost touch and um, had no support. And so I got the Reiki masters and didn't know what to do with it. <laughs> um other than practice and meditate and study on my own. And so that's what I did. And um, the more I learned about other Reiki practitioners, they kind of have a very similar story where their Reiki master didn't continue supporting them. And that was one of the reasons why I developed this group so that we could mentor each other, that I could provide um, training and insight and um, course development so that you all had a place to receive further information, um, not an attunement class, but all the other stuff that really, um, that you need to have a successful Reiki practice, whether that's a self Reiki practice for yourself or for your Reiki clientele and building that business. So that is a big part of it. That's a huge part of it. Like I feel like every Reiki practitioner in the world needs support and um, they're not getting it. And so here I am wanting to fill that gap. So I guess that's reason one, number one, why I do what I do is because I want to support you the way I wasn't, right? And, um, and then the other piece of my passion is the chakras. And so after I left my first husband, um, it was a really negative relationship. I was very emotionally abused. I left with PTSD and, um, I kept getting more and more sick because what happens when you suppress your emotions, it starts to develop in a physical dis-ease, right? And so when you have physical dis-ease going on your body and you're not giving voice to the emotions that you're suppressing, um, you your whole life can go haywire, <laughs> right? So I, um, I got really sick, I got really sick. So it was probably about Oh, three, four years ago, not only was I diagnosed with ulcerative colitis and um, to the point where I was hospitalized and no one knew what was going on with me um, and kept getting sent back home and then to the hospital and back home again. And I was just really sick. I was really sick. And um, and finally, my I went to a naturopath and she sent me up to the GI specialist and we got diagnosed and got on prednisone and uh, major medications, which was totally outside of my paradigm. You know, like I've always been a health nut tree hugger. Um, granola muffin is what my godmother used to call me. I've always been that way. And so um, that was really hard to go to a place where I needed to accept medical help in a way that I wasn't used to it. So, um, and then um, soon after that, my anxiety, probably because all of my probiotics in my system, all my healthy bacteria in my gut was totally, totally wiped out, right? And so then soon, soon enough, the anxiety kicked in um, to a degree that I hadn't experienced before. And um, I was coping with the uh, mediations and the police and all this custody battle stuff um, for my son, who is now 12, but at the time when he was seven, eight, he was also going through a lot of trauma from his biological father. And the attack came at me. So, you know, it was a huge life lesson on boundaries, not only in physical boundaries and having, to, you know, the police got involved for trespassing and like really setting some very clear boundaries down 
um, that he wouldn't be able to cross. And then learning to have those emotional boundaries and becoming a broken record with someone who is a narcissist, probably borderline dis personality disorder, going, no, you may talk to Zach from six to seven. No, you, you know, just keeping those boundaries, always pushing those boundaries, right? Um, and, and then after doing some of the boundary work and working on the anxiety, I really had to come to a point of choosing me first. You know, there was a time in all of that where I basically had a nervous breakdown and um, couldn't take care of myself and not my kids. I kept putting my children and my husband first and not and sacrificing myself. And I knew there needed to be a really big shift. And so I gave up custody of my son for about probably five, six months where I only saw him maybe once a week until I could do the help, the self healing that I needed. So that was Reiki. That was meditation. That was EMDR therapy. That was um, EFT tapping. There was all these things that I added in and I made a very clear and conscious choice at that moment that if it wasn't Reiki and it wasn't meditation, then I wasn't doing it. So I quit my job and um, really made a very cognitive decision that I was going to do my passion and if it wasn't my passion it was going to make me sick <laughs> so um that's when I started the Reiki cafe that's when I started the Reiki challenge to do the self-healing because I needed to hold myself accountable and I changed my life I changed my whole world and luckily I was married to a very supportive husband who could allow me in a gentle way to support my healing process and so when it was the right time, I was able to take back my son and integrate him back into a healthy home. Um, my daughter was getting older and so it was less draining because she was very sick when she was um, an infant, um, colic, screaming constantly until you know nine months of age. And so, you know, there was lots of compounded issues, but what I started to do was go, what is the underlying issue going on here. I've got a lot of anger. I've got a lot of rage that isn't being suppressed. I've got control issues and boundary problems. I've got, um, I, I, and I was looking at the shark chakras and what that meant. So I was constantly going back to this is solar plexus. This is solar plexus. This is solar plexus. And, um, you know, and sometimes it would be something else like a root chakra or third eye or whatever, but um, I started studying the chakras and it, to me, it felt like a guide to healing. And that's what I teach. Chakras, if you can understand the chakras, you have a, a direct path to your own healing process. So I was studying the chakras and I'm like, okay, I need to work on solar plexus, which is really understanding who you are what you want to be, what you're ready to let go of, because I wasn't letting go of anything. I will, and that's how what how my ulcerative colitis presented itself, right? So I wasn't, my gut would just basically stop. It would shut down and I wasn't processing. I wasn't digesting life. And so I started putting my, my the ideas about the chakra into practice. What can I let go of? Where can the boundaries be set? What can I say no to? What can I be very clear on? What's gonna, where's my self care? And making me a priority. Okay, so um, let, let me recap. I didn't have a great Reiki master relationship and so I needed to, I, I'm really motivated to create that kind of space for you all. And then I've been through a lot, both emotionally and physically, where I understood that Reiki and the chakra understanding and implementation of healing the chakras with Reiki and other tools was a path to healing. Okay, so with those two things came about the Reiki Cafe, came about the Reiki and chakra revitalization courses, um, and it was a way for me to hold myself accountable to the work, to promoting Reiki, to educating not only my community here in, in Bozeman, Montana, but to educate other Reiki practitioners how to stand in their truth, understand that their dis-ease in their body had emotional connection, and that there was a path to healing. 
And self-healing had to be a priority in every Reiki practitioner's life so that they could then overflow in abundance to those around them, their homes, their uh, all the uh, different pieces of your lifestyle to your businesses. You had to do the self-healing first so that then you can overflow in abundance to those around you. And that is my um, my core belief that if you can heal yourself with Reiki, you can then be absolutely ready to take on um, and overflow an abundance to those around you. Does that make sense? Can I get a thumbs up from those who are watching if that makes sense to you? If you can relate to with your own stories that you know, it is our challenges that builds our character so that we can work on our passions, right? Right. So I feel like I had a lot of trauma. Um, I had, I have two, three years still in my memory bank that have been wiped clean, that they're, that are black, <laughs> right? And so I lost my son's first two years of life. I don't remember it. I can barely remember what it was like when he was a baby. And so my goal is to help each and every one of you and the Reiki community at large so that they can better heal themselves so that they can go out and heal others. So yes, Melissa Davis says you're amazing, so full of knowledge and absolutely love your online chakra courses. So I'm going to be doing more. I'm going to, the throat chakra revitalization challenge is coming up this Friday. I'm going to be working on the slideshow presentation and getting ready for that webinar, which is going to be Friday at 10 a.m. Mountain, which is 9 Pacific and 12 noon Eastern. So you want to jump on that. I am giving away these chakra courses um, basically they're nine dollars this is nothing as soon as the coursework is full and complete I'm going to be setting in a, a, a new motion to really help Reiki practitioners in particular but you could be yoga instructors or massage therapists or you know there might be a little expansion of who wants to learn about the chakras who really wants to dive in and take care of their chakras heal their chakras so that they can better benefit their clients with that knowledge and so my my hope and why i'm doing a lot of market research is to really dial in what you guys need and so that i can better support you so my goal is is that there's going to be more uh, metaphysical anatomy and physiology presentations to do an overview of the chakras to understand what that is so that then you can know and trust who i am as well as you know decide do you want to just do the coursework as a diy um you know just pick up the seven packages for x amount of money or do you want to do a mastermind and really go deep and take that price tag and make it a business expense and change your life. Change your life for the better and for the betterment of everyone in your life. Every relationship, every business venture, every everywhere you go, you can sprinkle that Reiki love because you know what? Energy follows intention. Let me say that again. Energy follows intention and I am excited. You can see I'm excited. I love my job. I love my work and I want you to feel that same way that you are healing yourself so that you can go out and heal others. And so with that, I will say thank you for being part of the Reiki Cafe and this community that has supported me over the last three years. And thank you for, you know, participating. I sent out um, a Reiki Cafe University survey. So if you've ever taken my courses, there's a survey out. I'm giving away a chakra analysis um, for the winner, whoever, you know, I'm going to put everyone's name in a, in a jar and, 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 um, and give out a free chakra analysis. And I want that to be you because, and I'll be setting up lots of um, discovery or you want to call them strategy calls to see if my chakra mastermind course is what you are needing in your life to take charge, to heal, and to benefit those around you. So if you have questions, if you want to talk to me, if you're like, yes, yes, I want to move forward. I want to heal. I want to build my business. I want to, I want to change my life. I want you to contact me, you know, send me a direct message saying, Christine, I want to do a call. And guess what? I'm going to, I'm going to call you up. I'm going to say, let's make a time and let's make a date and we're going to do it. So that's what I'm here for. This is why I have the Reiki cafe and I'm here to be of service to your benefit. 
and um, I'm ready. To, I'm ready to take it on this year. Twenty nine year. Twenty nineteen is going to be a year of um, let's shake it up, let's make progress, and let's let's make our Reiki dreams come true because. I have them and I know you do too. And I believe the world will benefit if we can step into that confidence and power and make it happen. So with that, thank you so much for being with me, for watching today and take care.